The podcast that you're about to listen to may cause some listeners to question everything. Well, hey, hey there, happy innovators. How are you guys all doing today, huh? How you doing? You know, I wanted to make a podcast today, obviously, but I don't have anything I really can talk about, you know, but I really wanted to talk in a podcast today. So I'm just going to go ahead and wing it and see if I can come up with some things on the fly to talk about. Um, so we'll consider this podcast like an experiment that way. Like, uh, can I spontaneously come up with topics to talk about? Like, <laughs> is it a waste of time? I don't know. Is it a waste of your time? Maybe, maybe, I don't know, but we're going to find out. So I don't know. What do I want to talk about today? I don't want to talk about politics. I can say that, but it's probably unavoidable nowadays. Um, but I'm personally getting a little bit tired of my podcasts always being you know, something about politics because, you know, I think a lot of people are just getting fed up with it. <laughs> it's so stupid and it's so crazy what's going on. Uh, politically, so I don't know. I, I, I think it's unavoidable to t you know, talk about it, but I'll try to come up with something else. <laughs> I guess I could talk about my music a little bit, right? Um, I mean, I, after all, that's really the, the point of the Singularity podcast is to promote pipe choir music and PC3 music. So, um, uh, you know, I just recently released a pipe choir album called The Bright Side of the Moon. And uh, I just finished the Wrench in the Rubicon album description. So The Bright Side of the Moon is out there. You know, people are listening to it and hopefully enjoying it. And uh, it's going to be a busy year like between now and January. Um, there's going to be a lot of new music coming out before the end of the year. Hopefully, that's the plan. So, you know, new PC3 and new Pipe Choir. Um, I really had set some goals for myself for the year of 2024 that I wanted to do. So, uh, The Bright Side of the Moon was one of them and Days Away was one of them and uh got a couple more things coming real soon i've been working almost constantly on new music and you know it's uh a little overwhelming sometimes but it's also like a lot of fun and uh like what else am i gonna do you know a podcast okay i'll do that too anyway you know i'm sitting in here in my studio with a cup of coffee right here. I'm going to take a sip of it. If you have a cup of coffee, I suggest that you take a sip as well. So hang on. Oh my gosh, that coffee. It's a little cold. It's not quite as hot as I want it to be, but man, does it taste good. You know, for those of you that have been listening to the Singularity podcast for a while, you know, you probably... You know, remember me talking about things like the flat earth and antiqua tech, mud flood, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm still kind of traveling down that path. You know, I'm still kind of exploring the ideas of antiqua tech and mud flood and flat earth, all that stuff. Like, you know, th these possibilities of things that you know, may seem impossible or may not seem likely to many people, but like that never bothered me. Like, I don't care. I'll, I'm going to think what I want to think and I'm going to say what I want to say. And, uh, 
you know, if the earth is flat, I don't know. I don't know. It might be, though. And, uh, yeah, there's, like, conspiracy theories, and it implies all this other stuff. But, you know, really, I just chalk it up to this idea that I'm a free thinker. You know, I get excited about new ideas and new things. And, uh, you know, I started out, you know, with something like Flat Earth, let's say, and then I moved on to Antiqua Tech, and that kind of ties in a little bit to the whole Flat Earth idea and this idea that our history, like the history that we've learned growing up is not necessarily true and not necessarily accurate. And, you know, like I said, many people uh, poo-poo that idea. They don't believe anything like I do, you know. But, you know, it's really not so much that I believe uh, that the Earth is flat or that I believe in this uh, theory of Antiqua Tech and this theory of mud flood and scorched earth theory and you know that there were these cataclysms that happened in the past you know it's not really like a matter of belief like it's not a hill I would die on but let's face it I mean nobody really knows I mean that's that's uh, maybe like a byproduct of uh, the times that we live in you know, where information is obfuscated or hidden and, you know, lies are reported and people believe them and everything. And yeah, I mean, it it goes all the way across the board from, you know, politics to history to uh, future events and technologies, all kinds of things. You know, it's, it's not, uh, small stuff it's it's pretty big and it's not like i said it's not something that i necessarily believe but um it's not something that i completely doubt okay and where am i going with all this well there's this term um the term is preterism p r e d E R S I S M. I think that's how it's spelled. Preterism, preterist. And no, it's not some kind of like, you know, sexual fetish or something. It's um, this idea, okay, uh, for all of you Christians out there. Preterism is this idea that the second coming of Jesus Christ on earth may have already happened okay and um, that may sound really really wild especially to people who know the Bible and they've read the Bible and they know what it says it kind of is a little bit challenging you know and um, it's something that I've been exploring kind of getting into a little bit and I will admit that it's uh, it's one of those things where it's like a game changer for my spirituality you know like it really is a, a big thing a big change and a big concept like this idea that there was you know, already in, in the past, there was already a millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Like he had prophesied, he would have, um, most Christians that are alive today are waiting still for the second coming of Christ to happen. But with this preterist belief, uh, idea, you know, they're, operating under the idea that Jesus has already come his kingdom was already here and we are in some other part altogether of the book of revelation like we are like playing way past 
the second coming of Jesus now. And some of the ideas, and bear with me here, okay, because this is going to get a little wild, but a lot of the stuff that I'm researching and reading into and the, the things that are that I'm learning are kind of telling me that these buildings, these structures that I was calling Antiquatech and all that, you know, like the cathedrals that we see, uh, these old buildings that are amazing architectural designs, like they may have served another purpose in the past. And now they're a cathedral, now they're a church, now they have, you know, ceremonies inside of them. But at one time, those buildings may have been much more than we we realized they were. Okay. And uh, there's some evidence along those lines that's very plausible, you know. Um, and I won't get into all that now, but how this ties into this idea of preterism is the belief anyway, is that it's possible. Okay. It's possible that all these structures that I've been talking about for years now, okay. These buildings that are in every city all over the world, they're everywhere. Even in your hometown, whoever you are listening to this podcast, if you walk into your downtown area, no matter where you are, you can find these structures, these really old structures that are still there. They are rock solid. They may be very old, but they're there. They're usually like your city hall or like a fire station or a library or a courthouse in you know, these old buildings that, you know, we have been taught, you know, were built in the 1800s or, you know, at the turn of the century, the, uh, you know, 1901 or something like that. But there are people out there who believe and are researching and have plausible evidence to prove that these structures are probably much older than we realize they are. And the preterist belief is that These buildings that we have, these buildings that we see, may possibly have been constructed during the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. And that may sound really wild to you. And it is. I mean, come on. It is. Uh, It's it's, uh, way, way fringe, you know, kind of idea or thinking, but... um, I guess that's what intrigues me about it, you know, like uh, the more that I research this kind of stuff and the more I watch and listen, the more that I kind of can see that it might be true. Like it might be true that these old buildings that we see, like Notre Dame Cathedral, okay, Maybe the timeline that we've been given about Notre Dame Cathedral is not really accurate. It's not true. Like that structure is much older than we've been taught. And it is possible, okay, it's possible that when, you know, that Jesus did return already and these buildings were made by him or by the people that he was with, you know, that he promised you know, this, this kingdom, this millennial reign, he, he promised it. Okay. And, uh, is it possible that it happened already? Is it possible that what we know as the dark ages or the medieval period was actually the millennial reign of Jesus? You know, um, think about that. That's pretty wild. This idea that the dark ages, this era of like, I forget a thousand years, maybe or something where, uh, there's no history and nobody wrote anything down and nothing happened. And they called it the dark ages because there was nothing left or done from that time period. Does that make any sense? No, of course not. It doesn't make any sense. So is it like one of those things where the dark ages are actually 
the time that Jesus Christ was reigning on earth? Think about that. It's pretty wild, but it's pretty exciting at the same time. You know, but, you know, unfortunately, if that's true, then what that means is that a lot of Christians have been misled or have been lied to about our history and where we are on that timeline that Jesus had established before he was crucified, you know? So for those of you that listen to this and you you don't believe in Jesus, you don't believe in Christianity, you're an atheist or an agnostic, that's okay. You know, uh, it's your fate, it's your destiny, you know, and I'm not here to determine your fate or your destiny. I'm not. And you're not here to determine mine either. We all have free will and we all have the ability to kind of think about things and, you know, deal with them as we see fit. And this is one of those things. So, um, I guess like if somebody was like, Oh, Mike, you know, you're crazy. That's totally wrong. Um, you know, it's, uh, apostate to think that way or talk that way or whatever you know what that's okay (laughs) it's okay you know I don't totally disagree you know I'm not 100% sure of anything these days but I gotta tell you the more I watch the more I see the more I learn this idea of preterism you know the idea that Jesus Christ has already returned and gone after a thousand years of reigning on earth. Um, You know, it's certainly very intriguing to think that these buildings that we see, these, these structures that really can't be replicated even with today's technology or, you know, there just simply isn't enough money to do it anymore not cost effective or something to build a structure out of marble you know from top to bottom and have these intricate uh, carved statues and pillars and you know slabs of marble that weigh 500 tons you know and uh, just all kinds of stuff I mean if you get into it you know Google, Preterism or Google Mud Flood or Google Antiquatech or Google Old World Buildings, you know, and you'll, and you'll see, you'll get a cacophony of videos and articles and photographs and all this stuff that's pointing at these pretty obvious anomalies structurally, these buildings that are sitting in the middle of every city we have, you know, and they're, they're half buried like what? Who constructs a building like, you know, with windows that are half buried? Like nobody does. I mean, the imp- the implication is that, you know, maybe at the time that Christ was exiting and going back to heaven, uh, that there was a cataclysm here on the earth. And uh, what we have now or all over the world are like what was left after that event, after that moment. And uh, like, you know, earlier I was, you know, addressing the people who don't believe in Jesus. But if you're somebody who does, like myself, I mean, I believe in Jesus Christ. I do. I really do. And, um, you know, is it possible that our history has been obfuscated Is it possible that we've been lied to? Sure. Sure. I didn't write the history books. Who did write the history books? And that's a whole separate debate. But it's like nobody really does know for sure what happened before we were here. We only know like what we're told or what we're taught in history books or in school. Right? So does that mean that it's true? Not necessarily. I mean, I would like to think that, uh, you know, if I read something in a history book, if I was taught something 
by a teacher who I believe genuinely cared about my education. You know, I would like to believe that everything they told me was true, but just because something is untrue and they're teaching it doesn't mean that they're aware of the fact that they're teaching something that isn't true. They believe it's true as well because they were taught the same thing that they're teaching me, right? I mean, it's just this loop, this endless loop of, well, you know, this conundrum that we're in right now in our society, all over the world, really, modern society all over the world, nothing can be verified. You know, I've talked about that before, and it's true. You can't deny it. You know, we live in a time where nothing can be verified. You really have to operate and make decisions like about big things, about the big picture on your own. You know, you have to discern and try to use wisdom to determine the truth and, you know, what's really going on. And I'm certainly trying to do that. I would imagine you are as well. So, you know, is it possible that all the stuff that we've learned growing up is, you know, maybe not completely false, but, you know, certainly not completely true either? Or is it possible that it's all wrong, like completely wrong? Is that possible? Yes, that is possible. I can't say with any degree of certainty that everything that I was taught was the truth and was true. It actually happened or was real history. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I was a kid in school. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, I, I, I went to school like everybody else. and I learned like everybody else and I was taught by teachers like everybody else. So I don't know. Think about it. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? You probably think I'm whacked out, and that's okay if you do. But I guarantee you that if you start looking up some of the stuff that I'm talking about in this podcast and in a few podcasts I've done in the past, you might be a little convinced yourself. You might have to start asking questions and scratching your head like I'm doing. Like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And... You know, with that kind of uncertainty comes an ocean of issues that are just, you know, they, that turns everything I've learned on top of its head. But, you know, as troubling as that is, that, you know, the idea of having to question everything that I was taught, at the same time, I have to admit that it's exhilarating a little bit. Like at the same time, you know, I relish the idea of being a free thinker and a critical thinker. I love it. And I think that's part of the reason why I had so much of a problem with the past four years or five years here in the United States with, you know, the censoring and, uh, you know, cancel culture and all that kind of stuff, because, you know, I live in a country where I have free speech. I can be free to think and speak and have ideas. You know, it doesn't have to be life or death or it doesn't have to be black or white or, you know, it doesn't have to be any of that. It, it can just be fun and free, you know, and why would anybody ever want it any other way? I don't know. That confuses me more than anything else. Like, why would anybody ever want to live in a society where you don't have free speech? You know, that's so strange. <laughs> like, okay. Let, I mean, let's, let's really think about this here. <laughs> this idea of censorship. I mean, since we're doing a podcast today where it's really off the cuff and I'm just improving here, you know, I don't have any notes written down. I don't have anything written down. But, you know, this idea of living in a society that's closed, like, what kind of an idiot would want that? You know, it's like uh, wanting to live in a country that doesn't have any food. Or wanting a lifestyle where you don't have a place to live. 
<laughs> like, why, why would you want something that is to your detriment? You know, lack of food, lack of shelter, or lack of like free expression and thinking. You know, I almost want to tell those people that think that way that are like what on board with the communism idea. You know, I almost want to tell them like we live in a country where you can be free and think freely. So, you know, if you want to be a communist, okay, be one, have a nice life. It's your fate. It's your destiny. And I'm totally cool with that. And man, I'll tell you, I would die to defend your ability to think and feel the way you do. You know, but why would you want that? You know, you're, you, anybody who would want something like that is clearly out of touch. I mean, like, come on. Living in a society where you can't say certain things or you can't do certain things because it's like uh, offensive or something to somebody. Oh, oh, come on, baby. I'm a I'm an artist, man. You know, I'm doing this thing. This is my life. This is my fate and my destiny. You know, I'm not going to have somebody censor my speech or something like that. I mean, there may be people who don't like what I say or whatever, and there may be people who do, but that's not going to change the fact of like whether I'm going to speak or think that way. And I'm not going to change my thinking because people don't like it. You know, why would anybody do that? We don't have to do that here in America. Like if you want that kind of thing, there are plenty of other places to go all over the world where they don't have free speech and they can't express themselves without going to the slammer or something like that, or getting into trouble somehow, you know, but this country, America is not one of those places. So if you want that kind of thing, like communism, or you want censored speech, you want lockdown society, you want that kind of thing. Well, I don't, you know, I don't. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, we live in a time, I guess, according to what the, the news sources and everything that we see, that I see, Maybe it's like specifically my news feed because like it can be that way now where my news feed is different than yours. It's tailored to me and my likes and dislikes and vice versa, like for you. Right. Think about it. It's pretty it's pretty amazing in a lot of ways, but it's also pretty worrisome, you know, that we live in a time like that. I mean, I find myself looking back like five years, six years, and I can't believe how much has changed. You know, like, hmm, I can't be the only person who's thinking that way. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that, you know. And a lot of the changes that have happened over the past five or six years are not good. You know, um, but at the same time, you know, trying to be an optimist, there is some good, you know, I'm having a hard time thinking of it right now, but, uh, you probably agree with me on some level, you know, a lot of people, I think, see it and a lot of people don't really talk about it, you know, probably because they're afraid or, you know, they don't want to stand out or they don't want to get into trouble or they don't want to make enemies or they don't, you know, whatever, you know, but that's stupid. That is stupid. And, uh, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense to me. Why anybody would ever want to live in a closed society? You know, I don't know. You know, my wife bought me this T-shirt that says, um, make 1984 fiction again. <laughs> oh, I love that shirt. 
I have a lot of cool t-shirts, actually. I should probably talk about that at some point. Maybe that's what I'm doing right now. Um, but I know I have this pretty large collection of t-shirts that are pretty righteous and pretty funny. And that's my latest one. But think about that. Make 1984 fiction again. And oh, the looks I get from people. It's so funny. Um, yeah, I can talk about this. I can talk about this because it, it is uh, an interesting social experiment. You know, like if you get a T-shirt that says something specific, especially if it's challenging, like in any way um, about what's going on in the world or whatever, socially or whatever. If you buy a T-shirt that says something that's profound or funny or interesting, and then you go out into the public sphere with that shirt on or dressed that way, people notice it and people will react. So it's really kind of interesting because the people who see my make 1984, you know, George Orwell fiction again, like the people who see it and they don't like it, they don't say anything. They just give me a look. You know, of like total disgust, right? But more often than not, I'll just be walking through a parking lot or I'll be walking through a store, you know, just walking through a park and somebody will see it and they'll say something and they'll be like, amen, or ain't that the truth? Or totally, dude, I love that shirt. You know, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, more often than not, I have people responding to this t-shirt, this George Orwell make 1984 fiction again t-shirt, like in a positive way, like they agree, you know, and uh, it's quite interesting, really, as a social experiment, you know, um, and I have a handful of, like I said, I have a pretty good size collection of shirts that are like that, you know? I mean, I wear t-shirts all the time and if I see one that's funky or funny or whatever, I'll get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I like that. But that reminds me, now that I'm saying that, um, I should mention here, if I'm a good businessman, which I'm not, but if I'm trying to be one, um, I don't know how many of you notice this or whatever, but, you know, I've had requests in the past for uh, T-shirts and merchandise and swag for Pipe Choir Records and Pipe Choir and the podcast and PC3 and all that stuff. So after, you know, researching a lot, looking at a lot of different companies, uh, my wife and I finally decided, you know, settled on one. And we now have uh, Pipe Choir t-shirts available, Singularity Podcast t-shirts and sweatshirts and hoodies and coffee mugs and all that, uh, aprons, you know, whatever, all kinds of stuff. So that's available now. Um, we have a little store or whatever, like everybody else has done. You know, they set it up on their YouTube channel or whatever, and you can buy a shirt. So it's new relatively new and I will tell you this that I've kind of made it like a mission for myself to um, come up with as many ideas as I possibly can for t-shirts and stuff like that like so you may go to my store now and take a look at what's there but go back in a couple months and it'll be probably doubled or tripled what's there Okay, so the goal is to keep adding because I have so many things, so many ideas and stuff like that. I have been working on these ideas and like storing them away for so long in the hopes that I would eventually, you know, be making T-shirts and swag like I'm doing right now. And I'm just cracking those files open and it's just like an avalanche of ideas and not all of them are going to be like, you know, about the music or about 
me, you know, some of them are just random, funny, weird designs, artistic designs, things that I kind of got creative with, and now it can be on a t-shirt, that kind of thing. So if you're interested in that, I would appreciate you checking it out. And, uh, you know, you don't have to buy anything, just check it out. But uh, keep an eye on it, too, because like I said, I'm going to be feeding it, you know, adding to it constantly for like probably from now until God knows when, you know. So if you're into that kind of thing, it's out there. You know, like I mentioned earlier, too, the Bright Side of the Moon album is out there. I hope that you guys can check that out. You know, I hope that if you have checked it out, you know, maybe you like it. Maybe let me know in the comments if you feel so inclined. That would be nice. Um, you know, the original idea for this podcast was really just to promote the music and everything. It kind of, over the years, turned into something else a little bit. But, well, you know, let's see. How long have I been doing this now? Yeah, so I've been doing this podcast for about eight years. I've almost been doing it for ten, which I can't believe. I mean, even though I'm probably the most inconsistent podcaster ever, um, I am still going. It's still going. but um, And it will continue probably until I'm not here anymore, um, which is hopefully a long time from now. But one never knows, right? Uh, when my last podcast will be. It might be this one. You never know. You never know. So, uh, but I've been doing it for almost 10 years. And uh, the idea originally was just to promote the music. And it's kind of taken on a life of its own, in its own small way. And uh, man, am I grateful for that. And man, am I grateful for you listening to this podcast today even though I didn't have anything specific to talk about. But, um, you know, every once in a while I get that itch to do a podcast. And, you know, obviously today was one of those days. And uh, I'm glad I did it. But I also want to mention, now that I'm remembering this, um, you know, I'm going to be releasing a song very soon, a uh, cover song, cover version of the song by a singer named Peter Gabriel. I'm sure all of you know about, you know, and uh, he has a song called come talk to me. And uh, I've done a cover version of that song. And I've talked about this in podcasts before, because the song come talk to me, this cover version I was working on, I started it <laughs> probably not too long after I started this podcast back in 2017. I decided to work on it and, uh, you know, I would get sidetracked and then forget about it, put it away, pick it up a few years later, you know, work on it a little bit, you know, gung ho, ready to release it, you know, getting it, trying to get it finished. And then I get sidetracked again and put it away. And that just kept happening and happening and happening. And I think, uh, it happened like three times. The last time it happened was probably a year and a half or two years ago. I mentioned it in the podcast, like, I am now working on this song. It will be finished. I am going to finish it. I'm tired of it not being finished. And uh, right now, like in the middle of writing all this new pipe choir music and all that stuff, I stumbled across it. And it's going to be a little while before I release any new music. You know, pipe choir wise or PC three wise, probably like at least another month or so. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to stop everything right now. I'm going to finish. Come talk to me. My cover version of the Peter Gabriel song. I'm going to release it and we'll take it from there, you know? And uh, so you can be looking forward to that. It's, it's done. I finished it. I finished it today. As a matter of fact, as far as I know. Now, I could listen to it later on tonight and uh, change my mind, but I'm pretty sure I, I, I'm I'm going to release it. So that'll be out there. You can let me know what you think of that when you hear it. And uh, no big deal or anything, but I like to try to kind of, you know, 
release new music as often as I can. It's part of the deal, I guess, with what I'm doing is you got to try to keep the ball in the air as much as you can and don't let people forget about you and all that. So, uh, you know, hopefully you'll enjoy that. Hopefully you enjoyed this podcast, too. I'm not going to apologize anymore about not doing podcasts because I think that by now, anybody who's listening to this podcast still, after all this time, you kind of get how I'm doing it. I'm not doing it like everybody else. I I do it when I want to and not because I have to. And uh, whenever you see a new Singularity podcast, you can rest assured it's not because I'm on a deadline or I'm, you know, I have to answer to somebody if I don't. If you see a podcast from me, it's because I wanted to make one. And that's how it'll be probably forever, you know. So I I hope that you're cool with that because I am. I'm cool with it. And uh, I don't know. I guess I'm running out of stuff to talk about today. So with that, my happy innovators, one and all. I love you one and all. And oh man, do I appreciate uh, your loyalty and you know sticking with me for a long time. It's cool. It's nice to know that when I make a podcast, there are some people that are still hanging on. They're still willing to listen. You know, after all my crazy talk and all my stupid whatever and you know all this stuff, um, you know, it's a. At least if, if it's not anything else, it's a meaningful experience, at least as far as I'm concerned it is. So with that, my happy innovators, I'm going to let you go for now. It's almost like a phone conversation, right? And uh, I'll, I'll let you go. I got to go. But uh, you'll be hearing from me soon. You can keep your eyes open for the Wrench in the Rubicon album description. That's coming soon. Just worked on that today. Uh, I finished uh, Come Talk to Me today, and uh, I'm working on new pipe choir music as we speak. I have another album that's almost finished, and uh, I have plans for it, so you should be getting that really soon, too. I also have a new PC3 album that's going to come out um, very soon. It's almost finished, and uh, yeah. So, my happy innovators, take care of yourselves, have fun, be safe, and remember, folks, if you want to keep what you've got, you've got to give it away. Take it easy, everybody. Okay, happy innovators. For those of you that were kind enough and generous enough with your time to stick around to the end of the podcast for some music. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you a song from the new Pipe Choir album, or the newest Pipe Choir album, The Bright Side of the Moon. And it's a song called White Flag. And uh, I'm going to share it with you because my nephew has expressed to me that he likes this song a lot. And uh, so here we go. I'm going to share it with you. Song called White Flag from the Bright Side of the Moon. Here we go. Take it easy, everybody.
Turn me on. 